Hello and welcome to Growing Together Westcliff. Um, as you see here, I'm just uh, doing a little bit of dead hedging and today we're going to be talking about gardening for wildlife and what you can do in your garden or in the community if you haven't got a garden and gardening for wildlife can be about what we plant or the practices we use, you know, the organic techniques, or creating habitats like we put up uh, bird boxes and things. Hello, uh, hello there, hiya. So here we've got a dead hedge, and it's a good way. This is this is a habitat, and it's a good way of getting, you know, using all your wood that you find in the garden and not having to put it in a compost heap or break it up or chip it up, and. Gradually over time it breaks down as it has, has done here, but at the bottom there will be lots of lovely sort of insects and creepy crawlies and things that are really good for the ground. So I'm just going to finish with a few loose bits that have come off. So what I try and do, try and weave them in as much as I can. So do say hello if you're watching us. It's, like it's a glorious afternoon again. I'm sure I'm going to get a wet week soon. And a little bit, so I'm just going to tuck them in there. And then we're going to have a look around the garden and see the sorts of things we do to help help wildlife in our garden. So if, if anyone's got good ideas out there, you know, drop us a, a message and say what we do to help wildlife in your garden. There you are. I've tidied that up a little bit now. So we're going to have a nice nice little walk around the garden and, and see what we can find. And we will, because I know you like doing this, we will go and have a look at the chickens towards the end. Hi Isla, Isla, oh you're from the Tuesday Zoom group, hiya Tuesday Zoom group, I've not joined you yet have I? I uh, was in a meeting today so I couldn't join you again today, but hello everyone. So what I'm going to do now is just going to flip the camera around, so I can see where it is, there we are, and you can actually look down here, got a little bit of, this is not natural wood but this here, and you probably look underneath here and probably see quite a few wood lice. And that's the sort of things that are going to be... Um, hi Marie, oh nice to hear from you. And lots of little wood lice, which I quite like. And, and they're right at, they'll be right at the bottom of this log pile. So that's exactly what we want. And wood, wood lice are friends for the gardeners. So, yeah. I don't know if the wood lice know they're on live... live um, on life, but hopefully they don't find. I'm going to put them back under there. So we're going to have a little look around and wave. We're going to wave. So we wave to you all. <laughs> Let's have a look. So I'm I'm down in the kind of the the bird area, the orchard area at the moment. And so this is the dead hedge that we've got either side here that leads to our amphitheatre. So this dead hedge has been here quite a while. So it is a really good way of getting rid of a lot of the the woody material. Uh, let's have a look at other things now Not many of you could probably do this, but happy having bees is a, is a good way to help wildlife in your garden oh, Hi Rob. Oh, hi you Rob. Nice to hear from you Here are the bees. I'm not going to get too close because I tried doing this the other day to take a photograph and it didn't quite work So let's have a have a look at the bees. They're very very busy at the moment. Can you see them buzzing around there? Yeah so it's a lovely warm day. I'm actually sort of in the shade where I am and they say that's the safest place to be. Or to be. Let's excuse the pun there. There we go. And we go. So this is a kind of a orchard area and wild uh, wild bird area. And well, what's really good, we've got quite a lot of shade here and if you've got a garden it's good for, for people and wildlife to provide sort of some sunny areas and some shady areas. And it also, lots of trees, there's lots of lovely places for the birds to nest. And I see here we've got some lovely, if we come up, some elder. Oh, yeah, Rob, we're missing you in the woodwork. There's lots of lovely things we'd like, we'd like you to make, and, but hopefully you're back soon. So elder's really good. Get nice sort of little blackberries on here, which are really good for the birds. And with the flowers, you can actually make a sort of uh, a cordial a lot of people really like and so it's good to have a variety of trees with things with berries for the birds uh, to attract all kind of different uh, kinds of wildlife and here 
Here we've got a lot of you familiar with. It's like a bug hotel. And anyone can make one of these. Really, really easy. You need bits of wood and can put all sorts of things in there. So this one's made with some old pallets. I know you're familiar with the pallets, Rob. I know you like making other things with them. But they're good for bug hotels. And we've used branches and things. Old bricks, things like this. This brick's really good. It's got holes in it, so it'd be good for things to hide in. And I've actually been doing a bit of weeding earlier, so I've actually put it on the top of the bug hotel. thought that might be beneficial to something. Right, an obvious way to attract wildlife to your garden is to um, obviously put out some bird seed, which you've got here. They don't seem to be eating that much at the moment. It's probably because it's a lot more food naturally around. But once you start um, feeding birds, you'll, you'll make sure you keep the the food topped up because the birds come to rely on them. Yeah, there. And more, just as important as the food, is actually providing, especially in like dry weather at the moment, it's providing water. So here we've got a nice um, set up a sort of bowl here, the water. There, so that's nice. And got some stones in the middle so the birds can sit on there and dip their beaks in, have a drink, and have another little uh, water container for here. So it's, it's good to look after the birds. And coming over here, we find something a little bit different. Because you see, there's a bit of a mound on the ground. And if I come around here, I can show you. We've got, got a thing here called a hibernaculum. So it's something we've set up. And if you come down here, we've got some pipes. Yeah, can you see the pipe there? And we've got another pipe over there. And so, and you've got a mound. So underneath, you can go down these pipes, so there's lots of wood and sort of cavities. So it's a good place for sort of reptiles and other things that can go in and hide away from things and then on the top it just looks like an, you know, an ordinary bit of land. So that's a hibernaculum so if anyone wants more information on how to build one of those I'll be, I'll be happy to uh, give you more information. Again here we've got lots of lovely sort of um, hawthorn trees and elder trees it's a good for um, and a nice big oak tree there Good for wildlife. They're, they're native trees, so it means they attract sort of more sort of wildlife that's used to it in this country. And I think we've got some we've got some holes around here. Is it? Oh, hello, Lisa. I'm not ignoring you. I'm not annoying you at all. Uh, I think. Does anyone want to go and have a look? See if we've got a badger hole around here. We're just going to go through the um, the bushes here. So excuse the camera work. I think through here. Oh, no, I'm being very careful. I think. Oops. There we go. We've got a bit of a hole here, and I think it might be a a badger hole. I don't know if you can see that very well. There's a. That's sort of this whole area. We've had lots of activity of badgers over the years, so I can't, it'd be really good if a badger popped out, wouldn't it? But I don't think that's going to happen. I'm not sure if you saw that that well, but I'll give it a go for you. I'm just going to come out with the bushes here. So we've got things like brambles here. They can, they can get quite invasive, but obviously some of them are quite um, uh, good because um, they see um, you get get blackberries and um, here we are to you get blackberries for the birds and for people. But as long as you keep them under control, it's kind of having that balance between sort of nature and what you want to grow. Again, ivy can be quite good. It can strangle trees a bit, but it's, it's nice to, it adds good ground cover. So it's all about a balance. I know some people are very anti-ivy, but it's, it's great for wildlife. Yeah, Again, hedging is good, good place for birds to nest. And this is the herb garden, just lovely. We've got some climbers here. Again, this is quite good for birds and things because it's well out of the way of cats and things, so, you know, provides a lot of cover. 
Oh, Marie's been watching badgers on spring watch. Oh, well done. Yeah, oh, they're, they're fantastic creatures, aren't they? They're very, very big, aren't they? But um, they're, they're fantastic. We've got to look after our badgers. So oh, we've got the herbaceous border here, lots of lovely flowers. That's good for the bees and things. So again, it's having different things around the garden. Have a look, flowers. Thank you. Oh, I just see uh, decorators are up this way. So I'm just going to, um, we've got some people doing some decorating today in our um, training room. And I'm sure they don't want to be on um, on camera. So I'm just going to go past them. Uh, hello there. This is live, so don't worry, you're not on it. <laughs> okay, so we're going for Again, we've got sort of a pergola here. That's um, good for growing things up. And again, things are out of the way of cats and things, so that's good. I wanted to point out, um, if I can step backwards here, we've got a rowan tree, which has lovely red berries. And that, that's not a massive tree, so if your garden's, you know, not that big it is quite a good tree for a small garden yeah all the plants are growing very very well here and there's lots of work we've got to do but it's it, it's lovely and so many wildflowers and over here this is something you can do to help wildlife in your garden and this is just something rob's done he's made sort of you can make like holes in wood so to, for solitary bees if we're lucky we might see a bee go in uh, I've just seen one come out, it probably, uh, don't think we're going to be lucky. But you could just have one little bit of wood and, you know, put it on a post. This is like Rob makes and really good for wildlife. That's it, Anything around there. How's everyone today? Are you hot? It's, like, it's very, very warm again. look so all this ground cover is really good nice habitat this is hazel this is good the squirrels like this you get the hazelnuts so we do get quite a few squirrels in here I think they eat the bird seed as well so can't always win we're good though I don't know if some of you might have seen Jamie's um, live sessions and he'd been doing putting some uh, bird boxes up so this is this is by uh, the hub and we set up a, a little um, bird box yeah and it's attached to a camera so you might have to wait a little bit I don't always go to things straight away but that might be quite exciting yeah that's it okay. but, but if you notice on the um, the bird bird house it hasn't got a perch on it and a lot of people think, oh hi Georgina, it is very hot, it's very hot. A lot of people think you need a perch on a birdhouse, but in fact it, it although it's, you know, if you've got one that's fine, but it can he help predators to sit there, so something you're probably better off without a perch, and I think the RSPB probably don't do ones with perches. But, but a bird box with a, with a perch is better than having no bird box at all. Another thing is sort of the eaves of a building would be quite a good place, yeah. To look out for wherever you live, see if you've got anything growing, anything sort of nesting. We have had birds sort of nesting kind of up this little bit up here, just up there. So, so, so keep your eyes open, it's good to attract birds. And so a few years ago, we actually, some of you might remember, we had um, a blackbird nest in the sort of sails there amongst the pots and it actually laid some eggs. So, you know, even though there's a lot of people around looking at the plants, they, they took it as an opportunity as somewhere safe to uh, nest. So that was a few years ago. Good. And we're going to have a look now at some of the lovely um, boxes. Hi Jess, that some people have made, I say, these ones haven't got a perch, so that's, um, so they're good little boxes. And I'll just show you some of the little um, bug houses, I think Rob might have been part of, 
and these are quite simple to make and then you've got the little holes there where the little bees can come in and you can put it in a post so you can prop it up in your vegetable plot oh, yeah. so they're really good anyone can have a go at that uh, right, it's all about doing everything you can to attract wildlife to your garden uh, so we've got lots of uh, weeds growing in the distance there Hi, uh, Marie saying hello to Jessa, that's good <laughs> I like it when you're all talking to each other lots and lots of weeds but you know they should be quite easy to get up when the time comes so they, it's probably a you know it's a fantastic place for wildlife at the moment so there's a positive to everything and we come there okay can't see anything I have to check out can't see anything making a nest up there but you, you never know just, uh, just, just looking around you know what you've got and just thinking not trying to be too tidy sometimes because if you see here that wildlife it actually um, takes opportunity of everything we've got an old log here and although it's only a little bit of grass things will start growing amongst the things so you can sometimes get quite nice flowers growing in places like that so it's just how nature adapts and I find that quite exciting really and uh, who knows and the soil you know gets dropped or blown in there and, and things start growing no, it's I say helping wildlife it's good to conserve water so having a water butt will be really beneficial especially at the moment because it doesn't look like we're having any rain for a while and that's good for the environment and you're using natural rainwater uh, this, any of you were watching last week, I think I was uh, planting out some some kale plants and we were doing sort of, sort of like some companion planting. So we've actually planted out some marigolds uh, there and some poached egg plants. So they were, they were attract hoverflies and things, so that's really beneficial. So, so thinking about what you're planting all the time. Have a look. Going. So this building is quite good. We've got lots of nice sort of eaves for, for things to um, hide. I'm not sure if we get bats here. I don't know. Never been down here in the evening to look. Uh, I should imagine we probably do. And let's have a look around. Um, I've seen got bees and stuff tend to like um, blue flowers. So sort of chives that we've got here are quite good. I think we can just see a bee on there now. Okay, you can see it. I'll see if I can zoom in a bit closer. Oh, isn't that amazing? Yeah, they do like blue flowers, the bees. So the bees pollinate everything, so they really are our friends. And we've got another plant coming down here. I often talk about a lot, but it's just, this is so good for wildlife. It's just the um, it come free, and again, we'll see lots of uh, bees on here. There are the bees. And you see the bees? There we are. There's the bee. I don't know how sharp this is showing up on your uh, screen, but it's good. Lots of bees. And. A really good thing is to, to encourage wildlife you got is to make sure you have some water as we saw like you put out for the birds but if you can you can fit a little pond or something into your garden then that is really beneficial and even if it's just a kind of boggy area you know that is so beneficial with things like damselflies dragonflies and even though sometimes a pond doesn't look you know it might look a bit overgrown I can I, I reckon if we were to do a pond dip in there, there'd be a lot of stuff in there, so really beneficial. I, th I think we need to top it up with a bit of water, don't we, I think? I think we've been topping the one up at Rochford, but I think we've forgotten about this one, so maybe that's a job for this week. So, so even if, you know, if even if you've got a very small yard, if you just put out a small bowl with a sort of stone in the middle, and it can be really good, you can help the birds. And you might even get a toad, toad sort of dropping in there and making a home in a, in a bowl. It has been known. 
um, wildlife adapts to what there is. And, uh, so, oh, there's lots of bees around, this is really good. And so and having a lot of ground cover on your vegetable plot can be quite good as well. So we have a hawthorn hedge that goes all around the, the perimeter of the plot and that's excellent for, for birds because it's a bit prickly so people don't really like it and it's good, good cover and protection for the birds. And here we've got a fence. Where it's this, this is quite a good fence actually um, because if you were to have hedgehogs in your garden they'd be able to get under this and there's a bit of a problem with so sort of hedgehogs sort of their numbers declining at the moment so if you have a kind of fence that you know um hasn't got a gap at the bottom you might want to think about making a little little hole for your hedgehogs yeah and they say if you can put a hole in about sort of 13 centimeter square and then that is big enough for the hedgehogs to get through but say this sort of fence will be ideal in your garden yeah. so got to think about all these these lovely creatures so it's really really nice looking around the garden they <laughs> say so all the food that's for us is also for wildlife as well and so things like nettles you know a lot of people don't like nettles but uh, butterflies love nettles so they're very helpful we've got some grapes growing up there I know the the birds love those, so when they do come through, they come in and take all those. <laughs> so we've got lots of wildlife here, and I'll show you. We think we've got activity underneath the woodwork area here. If you can see a hole through there, I tried to block it off with a traffic cone, but it didn't quite work because they've taken some soil out. And we've also got a hole on the other side of the the woodwork area now which is down here so we, we think we've got foxes uh, living under there uh, but I think because there's no one working in the woodwork area it's a very safe place for them to stay uh -huh. uh, still she see a bird see a little sparrow in the distance there just come down, it's coming round to the chickens. I don't know if you could see that. And another space thing you could do, hi Gareth, is to if you've got a shed or something, or you can actually put on a green roof. And if you look up here, you've got kind of a little bit of a canopy here, and on the top, we've got lots of lovely. I'll come along here. Oh, can you hear me? I'm trying to trip over the pots there. This is this sort of kind of sedum that's coming off the top of a sort of green roof and that is fantastic and obviously they don't mind the dry weather so it's it's maximizing use of spaces for wildlife you know it's just because you've got a shed doesn't mean you can't incorporate wildlife but that that's fantastic have a look around here again here's some lovely nettles so if you can live with a few nettles it's, it's very beneficial and you can make nettles, nettle uh, tea, which is a good plant feed. And nettle soup is actually quite nice, but you have to get the nettles when they're young. Uh, places like this might look a bit unexciting, but there's things lying around and things can hide under there. And sort of the ivy there. Let's see, we've got another bird box here. Again, that's um, hopefully we'll get something in there at some point might be next year now. I don't know, they might be in there now, I don't know. That's how we're going. <laughs> it's very exciting, but this is a lovely area around here. You see how kind of dark and sheltered this is. This is fantastic. Okay. Not a bad place for a bird to nest. Okay. Well, we've had a good little look around the garden. I know you probably want to go and see the, the chickens. So we will go and have a look at the chickens. Um, so there's so much you can do to help wildlife in your garden. And say so here we're, we're organic and so that 
don't use chemicals and stuff, so that's going to help your wildlife. Um, I'll have to get this some mealworms, our little uh, uh, feathery friends. I can hear the birds singing, I hope you can hear them. Oh, look, some lovely, oh, more elder here. Oh, the birds are going to love these when you get the berries. Lovely. And the chickens are waiting for me. There's no surprise there, is there? Oh, look at them. They're all jumping around. And Turkey's always a little bit to the left, isn't she? Oh, <laughs> right, okay, chickens, I'm coming in. Mealworm time. Oh, I, th I think they understand what I'm saying. There we go. There you go. There we go, chickens. Oh. Here we come. Oh, they'll probably start jumping up in a minute. There we go. I'm going to go sit on my log. Oh, sit down. Oh, they were fight. Again, you can't see any of them because they're right by me again. They do this every week on me. I've still not mastered how to. They're all pecking me. Okay, open there. Oh, right, near one time it is. Get ready. You watch the chickens and say hello to each other. Oh, oh, this one just pecked me then. Let's just see a turkey. Turkey's over here. Oh, a turkey. Oh, yep. Oh. <laughs> they come very close to the camera. Oh, oh no. there it is. Oh. <laughs> That's keeping them entertained, isn't it? Okay, well, I think let's just stop. Bringing this to a, a close now. Oh, the, the turkey coming up close. Um, anyway, well, it's um, really nice being with you this afternoon, and um, hope you're all well, and um, hope you've had a nice little look around the garden and sort of um, been with the chickens. Well, oh, one's just about to peck me there. <laughs> anyway, I, I hope I hope you have a good week, and so I look forward to seeing you all next week. And take care, stay safe. See you soon. Bye.